E. Jean Carroll is testifying in her defamation trial against former President Donald Trump for the second straight day. Yesterday, the judge presiding over the case threatened to bar Trump from the courtroom over comments he was making during Carroll's testimony. The former president will not be in the courtroom today. The jury is expected to decide if damages should be awarded after Trump was found liable for defamatory comments that he made against E. Jean Carroll. The former president, for his part, has denied any wrongdoing. Our Errol Barnett joins us now from outside of the courthouse in Lower Manhattan, where he has been covering all of the twists and turns in this case. So, Errol, talk to us about what we're hearing from E. Jean Carroll today. Hey there, Lana. Great to see you. Well, Miss Carroll wrapped up her testimony this morning after telling this nine-person jury, seven men and two women who will ultimately decide if she deserves any uh, uh, financial damages, maybe up to 10 million. Um, she basically made the case that yes, she did know Donald Trump uh, back in the day socially, and that ever since she publicized the sexual assault that she says he committed against her while he was president, she, she, she publicized that while he was in the White House. She's just been the victim of an onslaught of online trolling and hatred that goes as far as death threats and extends to this day. She says she gets these messages on a regular basis. And as evidence to back up those claims, her team showed a black and white image of Miss Carroll back from 1987 when she was a writer on Saturday Night Live at an after party socializing and facing Donald Trump, who at that time was with one of his ex-wives and other uh, New York social elite. They also showed a video clip of the CNN town hall you may remember from last year after her other trial in which Trump was found liable of sexual abuse and defamation. Trump was asked about it. He said he didn't know uh, Miss Carroll and that it was all a lie. That was submitted as evidence and Lana, they've even demonstrated that Mr. Trump continues to say the same statements even now, and they showed that through Truth Social posts that they say were sent while Mr. Trump was in the courtroom, and even yesterday's evening press conference um, that Mr. Trump held after leaving the courthouse, in which he again denied knowing Miss Carroll and said that this was all her attempt to earn uh, money from sales of her book. And that's the case her team is trying to make. But unless the jury determines that there are financial damages that are significant, Mr. Trump won't stop in saying things that she says are ruining her reputation. Uh, and Errol, yesterday you were telling me about those courtroom fireworks, uh, but Trump is not in court today. He's at the funeral of his mother-in-law. I'm wondering how all of that changes the dynamics that you're witnessing in the courtroom. It's interesting, Lana. So yesterday's fireworks came from Miss Carroll's legal team telling the judge that Mr. Trump can be heard saying things like, it's a witch hunt, it's a con job, during Miss Carroll's testimony. Um, at one point, the judge had to say to Mr. Trump, I will revoke your privilege to be here if you can't sit silently. Um, Trump said, I'd love it. The judge said, you just can't control yourself. And then Mr. Trump said, you can't either. The jury is watching this, and it doesn't usually work well uh, when the jury sees the judge have to admonish um, a defendant in a situation like this. But today, Lana, proceedings began with the judge again clashing with Mr. Trump's lawyer, Alina Haba, on his legal team. Um, the judge really not liking the way she's presenting evidence or moving through um, some of the technicalities. And at one point, the judge said, this is evidence 101. At another point, Judge Kaplan said, this is not my law school examination. And so the jury is interpreting all of this as perhaps not seeing Mr. Trump or Mr. Trump's legal team as acting professionally in the courtroom. It could have an impact on what they ultimately decide. So, Errol, given all of that uh, and these multiple confrontations with the judge and the potential to impact the jury, what does it seem that the, the, the Trump legal team's strategy actually is here and what can we expect ahead? What I've heard so far from Alina Haber and Mr. Trump's legal team is that Ms. Carroll received um, online insults even before Mr. Trump officially denied knowing her and the assault. They also claim that as a columnist and a journalist and as someone who's appeared on television um, as someone who wants to help people, Miss Carroll wants the attention and she wants to have a higher profile. So that's how they're trying to kind of poke holes in the case that's being presented. Uh, one of the additional witnesses who's testifying this afternoon is a professor who measures the online impact of commentary um, and what it would take to repair someone's reputation. It's the same expert who, by the way, was part of the first trial uh, for Miss Carroll and Mr. Trump and part of the 
Mayor Giuliani election worker trial that took place in Georgia, they are trying to make the case that these compensatory, these damages need to be massive in order to stop Mr. Trump. But remember, Lana, Mr. Trump could still testify in his own defense. If it happens, it would happen Monday. But Judge Kaplan has laid out very specific guidelines for what he can and cannot say. We've already seen fireworks. And if Mr. Trump steps outside of those bounds while he's testifying, it could lead to additional sanctions. So there's a lot more to see before this trial officially wraps up here in the next few days. Well, great to have you following all the twists and turns. Errol Barnett, thank you.